Hey 456, glad you could join us this week. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Tobin. Quick question, what do you think is the best Easter candy? I think I could literally make a top 10 list, but that would take up way too much time yeah. today. So I'll just let you know, it's Starburst jelly beans by a long shot. Oh, I don't know. Chocolate bunnies are definitely a mainstay in the Robinson house. And you know what's a mainstay in 456? Of course, it's worship. Absolutely. So let's get up and get ready to worship. During these next songs, we will sing, move, and reflect to show God how much we love him. Whether that's clapping your hands or giving to offering, now's the time to do so.
We got chickens. Actually, they're chicks. Well, they're the same thing. Anyways, from what I understand, these chicks are quick. Good rhyme. And we're gonna have them race to see whose chick is the quickest chick. Okay, so the first chick from this side to that side wins, right? Correct. Yeah, so all of you guys play along with us. Pick a chick you think is quick. You're on fire today. And so is my chick named Gregor B. Come here, boy. And this is yours, and yours is named? Deborah. All right, let's see who right. is faster. Three, two, two one, one, go! go. They're, they're, come on, Gregor B. Over here. Come on, buddy. You can do this. No, oh, Deborah. Deborah's Deborah, in the lead. No. Deborah's in the lead. Deborah, yes. She's turning around. Gregor B, you gotta move, buddy. You gotta move. She's in the lead, friends. Come on, Deborah. Oh, he's pecking. Yeah, I know. They're trying to eat the road. <laughs> they're huddled. Come on, come on, Gregor B. Oh, there getting... she goes. There come she on. goes. No, Gregor B. There she goes. This isn't cheating, is it? Come on, yes, Gregor it is. B. Oh, Deborah, I think she's in the lead. Come on, Gregor B. Go, go. What if I pet him and give him encouragement? They're standing in, in a really You're like straight good. line. You're doing great, bud. You're doing great. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's back at his foot. This is this is the oh, worst race man. ever. Oh well. Oh wait, whoa. So they, come on, Gregor B. They're not You're as not quick this. as you anticipated. No, but at least it was fantastic. It sure was. It was great. It was I think great. it's time to move on to our teaching today. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And today's teaching is amazing. It is from one of our favorite teaching pastors, Robert Watson. Oh, yeah. He's going to tell us a part of the Easter story, specifically while Jesus was on trial. So let's check this out. Check? Really? I'll never forget the first time that I, I really, like early on, felt just the depth of guilt for something that I had done wrong. And it actually, as we're talking about camp, happened at a camp. I was at junior high camp with my brother, and there was this girl, she was a little bit obnoxious, so my brother decided, I'm gonna say it was his idea, not mine, I just executed it, okay? My brother decided, hey, let's give this girl a chocolate bar that we put x lax in. And so we kind of carved it out, put some chocolate, like x lax tabs. How junior hires got a hold of that, I have no idea to this day. Again, like every story that I ever tell about my childhood, I'm always like, where were our parents when this was happening? But it, we, we had the x lax we put it in the chocolate bar, and I did the like, oh, I, I can't possibly finish this chocolate bar. Does anybody want it? And she said, sure, I'll take it. And she proceeded to eat the entire thing. And we were just like, oh, she's doing it, she's eating it. And as soon as she finished, she says, hey guys, I just wanna tell you something. You're like my best friends. Oh. And camp has been so great building this friendship. And I was just, oh man, I felt terrible, like probably how she was gonna feel later, but I felt awful, just like this, <laughs> this like pit in my stomach, and I just that guilt. Have you ever felt that guilt? And then she says, and I'm actually leaving camp early to go on a road trip with my grandma. And then she got in a car and drove away. And I am one of the worst human beings on the planet. <laughs> but I just felt awful. Have you ever had that feeling where you just were overwhelmed, you just knew that you were guilty that you had done wrong? How many of you have ever experienced that feeling? Show of hands, all of our locations, yeah. The bad news is all of us are guilty and because of our sin, like if we were to stand before a holy God, none of us could pass the standard of perfection. All of us, when, when God would look at us, it's, it's obvious, our sin is obvious. For some of us, we're better at hiding it, some of us not so much, but all of us, every single one of us, beginning with me, we're all guilty. And the bad news is, God is just, so he can't just ignore our sin. 
God is just, meaning he can't ignore our sin, but he's also loving, meaning he won't just destroy sin, because to destroy sin would also be to destroy me and to destroy you. And so there's this huge problem with eternal implications that you and I are incapable of solving on our own. The Bible teaches us in Romans 3, all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. All of us have this sin problem. But then comes the good news, and the good news is all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus, who he is, and what he has done. God in humility, the Bible teaches us, took on flesh that he humbled himself, taking on the likeness of man, and that he lived, Jesus lived the perfect life that you and I could never live. See, Jesus is the only one who walked this earth who wasn't guilty like you and like me. Jesus lived the perfect life, and he would say things like, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. Jesus began to pave the way that you and I couldn't pave on our own. He lived the perfect life, and while all the Bible is about Jesus, there's these four accounts in your New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are like the biographies of Jesus. And they give us a lot of insight into who he is and what he taught and what he did. And at the most important part of all four of these gospels, they're called, at the most important part of the story, there's this person who shows up in all four accounts of the life of Jesus. Jesus. And it's this person who I believe is the most relatable person in all of the Bible, yet almost nobody ever relates themselves to him. And I believe the reason why this person shows up in all four accounts is we're meant to pay attention to who this person is because this person really, in every way, represents you and represents me. This person's name is Barabbas. And Barabbas, like all of us, was a guilty man. He had done wrong and everybody knew it. In fact, he was imprisoned by the Roman Empire and he was about to face execution for his crimes. He was guilty. In the context of the passage we're about to look at, the trial of Jesus is taking place before he goes to the cross. And the religious leaders have already stood and, and asked Jesus their questions and they realize, okay, we, we don't think Jesus should live but they didn't have the authority to execute Jesus, so now they appealed to the Roman Empire and to this guy named Pilate, who was the governor. Because Pilate had the authority to execute Jesus, and so Jesus is now standing trial, and there's this dialogue going on between Jesus and Pilate, where Pilate's saying, hey, don't you know I have all the power to release you or to have you killed? And Jesus says, you don't have any power except what's been granted to you. Jesus acknowledges that, yeah, okay, you may feel like you have power, Pilate, but you're not the one in control of this. Pilate asks him, are you king of the Jews? See, they, they wanted Jesus to be crucified for rebellion against Rome, claiming to be king of the Jews. See, what Jesus had actually done that the religious leaders didn't like is he had claimed to be God, which to them was blasphemous, unless it were true. And so here he stands trial before Pilate, and Pilate's asking, are you king of the Jews? In John 18, verse 36, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders, but now my kingdom is from another place. She says, my kingdom's not a kingdom like the ones you think of. My kingdom's much bigger than that. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world, see, God humbled himself and took on flesh. Jesus says, the purpose behind me coming here, the reason that I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. What is the truth? The truth is that God loves you. God loves you no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what's been done to you. Jesus says, I've come here to testify to the truth to you. That when you and I, we were lost in our sin, Jesus came so that we might be made right in a relationship with God. Jesus came to testify to the truth that you and I are great sinners and Jesus is a great savior. He says, everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? Retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. In other words, Jesus has done nothing wrong. 
There's nothing, as Pilate's investigating and asking questions and interrogating, there's nothing that Jesus has done wrong. He's blameless. I find no basis for a charge against him. But it's your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. So Pilate, he's a politician, so he kind of has this fun little game he plays where at the Passover he says, is there a prisoner you want me to set free? So the people will like him and vote for him again next year. So he says, is there somebody you want me to release? It says, do you want me to release the king of the Jews, quote unquote, talking about Jesus? And we know in the other passages, the religious leaders had stirred up the crowd. They shouted back, no, not him, give us Barabbas. Now, Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. And in other passages, we also know that, that he was guilty of murder. And so Barabbas, who we know very little about, his name means son of the father. He was guilty of insurrection. He was guilty of murder. And now he was set free in exchange for Jesus. Jesus. And I have to imagine if at some point that day, Barabbas walked by and he saw Jesus hanging on this cross. And it had to have crossed Barabbas' mind at some point that that cross in particular was meant for him. That cross was meant for Barabbas to be hanging on that same day, and now Jesus in his place is hanging on a cross. The reason why I believe Barabbas is the most relatable person in the Bible that almost nobody relates to is because that is a picture of the gospel. The bad news is we are all guilty. The good news is Jesus came and lived the perfect life that you and I couldn't live. And then he chose to give his life on the cross as payment for the guilt that you and I carried. He took on the wrath of sin and the consequence of sin upon himself in place of you and in place of me. Then when you and I, we think of the cross, that was our cross that Jesus said, I will bear it for you. Think about how Barabbas is a lot like us. He messed up more than a few times in his life, but still Jesus took his place, just like Jesus took our place for our sins. Yeah, and in the Bible, in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse nine, it says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And what this means is that we are freed from our sins, just like Barabbas. Obviously, God had a plan for Jesus, and he had a plan for Barabbas, and I know he has a plan for all of us. All we have to do is trust in that plan. So as we head out today, think about this question. How do we trust God's plan? And I know sometimes we have trouble trusting in that plan, but I know we can pray and ask others for help along the way. So grab a friend or a family member to talk about trusting in what God has for you. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Join our community by following us on Instagram at SVKids and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sun Valley Kids. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.